Hallelujah. 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 All right. So total rabbi to everyone that's been supporting uh, with our Taruma giving. Um, you guys have been really, really a blessing. None of that obviously would go to us. We are nonprofit, but we it's to the work of the ministry. Our cash app is dollar sign Great Awake Indy, PayPal. Great awake, Andy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I appreciate uh, the Mishpachai because I don't have to go into an entire diatribe about giving the Most High as to the assembly such as should be uh, redeemed and set free. And, and uh, we got to give it. We're giving assembly. So Tata Rabbi to everyone who's been uh, a blessing. All right. <clears throat> Our lesson for this morning is entitled In His presence in his presence hallelujah so just a quick review from last shabbat um the title of that lesson was called walking in the covenant walking in the covenant in our last lesson we explore what it means to walk in the covenant to walk in the covenant to walk implies not only the physical aspects of operating uh within the covenant but also the spiritual aspects this is depicted within the framework of the story of the lost son. The son walked away from covenant only to awaken and return home. Uh, that's called obviously Teshuva. When you return uh, to, the, to the house of the father uh, and return to the law, statutes and commandments. And the Mashiach laid that teaching out in Luke chapter 15. You know, uh, in today's lesson, we will continue in the same vein within his presence, in his presence. What does that mean and how do we obtain it? More importantly, once we are in his presence, how do we maintain it and stay there? Let's find out. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 16 and 11, hallelujah, hallelujah. My voice is kind of raspy for uh, not only worshiping and praising, uh, we might have to change our name to the Great Awakening Assembly's Apostolic Assembly. Uh, y'all sounded <laughs> like a like a worship team. Hallelujah. Y'all was look, man. We, I ain't even got to do all this stuff, but hallelujah. Presence. 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 The presence. Obviously, we just read Psalm 16 and 11. Uh, thou shalt show me the path of life. Uh, in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Uh, Psalm 31 and 20, thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Uh, Psalm 51 and 11, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. You, I hope you got you all see where we're going with this. Hallelujah. Uh, the earth shook. The heavens also dropped at the presence of Elohim. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of Elohim, the Elohim of Israel. Psalm 68 and 8, the presence. All right. Hallelujah. Serve Yahuwah with gladness. That's what we did. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Serve Yahuwah with gladness. Yeah. Come before his presence with singing. Yeah. Look, we Israel. This is what yeah. we do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, 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 it doesn't make sense. Look, look, to, to know all these scriptures, don't do no worship. Don't do no praising. Don't do no movement. Look, we move. We, yeah. we operate. Yeah. We have to move. We have to worship. It's inherent in worship to actually bow down. Hallelujah. To lift your hand. Guess yeah. what? That's a Hebrew word. Yada. Moving. Yeah. The movement of the hand. The yeah. movement of the hand. You cannot look. It's connected to who we are. That's why whatever. Look, you don't even have to be woke to know that. When you was in the world, you was moving. Look, Friday night comes. Look, you knew you had your outfit laid out, didn't you? 
You knew what you wanted to do. Hallelujah. You knew you was like, look, I'm going I'm to go get my groove on. And it was all about moving, moving, because we operate and move. Look, ain't nothing worse than a Hebrew that don't move. Look, 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 we had a song in the church. We say, I'm not going to let a rock cry out in my place. You got to actually move. You got to actually lift your voice. It doesn't make, look, look, look. You can know 20 million scripts. Ain't got no worship, the mountain don't move. Ain't got no praise, it won't move. Because there's a, there's a special element that happens when you praise and worship the most high. Because you're talking his love language. Y'all know about, look, y'all sisters know about love language? Y'all you, you, brothers, are y'all taking notes? All right, I just want to make sure, make sure y'all understand what I'm talking about. This is about, this lesson is about intimacy. Intimacy. He's tired of you holding his hand. Y'all's married now. Can, can, I, can I talk, can I talk, or it's time to consummate. You hear me? You want to talk about all the blessings. He wants you to do something for him. All right. The word for presence in all of these passages uh, is panim, panim, from the root pane, meaning the face of a person, the face of a person, as well as to turn to and focus attention. To be in his presence is to be in his face. You have to understand that. You have to be in his face. He wants you in his face. Yes. I'm reminded in a tour where uh, after Adam and his wife sinned, after they ate, uh, he came down and he was, they heard his voice walking in the cool, and they hid themselves. And notice what he says, where are you? See, see, he knows when you're not in his face. He knows when you're not in his face. He wants us in his face. When you, ooh, when you in his face, it changes you. It changes you because you can't come in like you are right now. We're going to break it. We're going to get into it, but you got to actually come into his presence with singing because it's not about you. Come before his presence with singing. Come before his presence with worship. Come before his presence with an offering. Yes. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yah, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do this. This is not, nobody has to pump you and prime you to worship the most. High. This is your Elohim. This isn't the nation's Elohim. This is your Elohim. So why are you treating him like a second-class citizen? Why are you treating him like he's a stranger? Why are you treating him like he ain't done nothing for you? Why are you sitting down on him? Why you got the nerve to ask him for something and you ain't did nothing for him all week long? What you talking about? What you talking about? I don't know how to lift my hand. I don't know how to pray. I don't know what works. You meant what we used to say, if he did nothing else for me. His, the Messiah shed his blood. What shall I render unto Yahuwah for all his benefits towards me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Most High. What are you doing? Don't, don't know how to pray. Ain't never, ain't never lifted up your hands. Ain't never worshiped. Ain't never got on your face and, 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 and cried out before him. What's going on with you? Why? When Israel, look, look, when his presence filled the temple, they all they could do was bow down. And you can't even you can't even sing to him. You can't even worship him. You can't even say hallelujah. What is wrong with you, Israel? You gotta get in his face. In his presence is the fullness of joy. Hallelujah. The presence of the face. The presence of the face. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The open mouth that breathes. The open mouth that breathes. The word we understand as presence in Hebrew begins with a pay, which is in ancient Hebrew is depicted as the open mouth. The mouth is used to vocalize thought as well as to breathe. 
When we are in Yahuwah's presence, we are in position to hear Shema. Y'all saying that, hallelujah. To hear what his will is for us. Also, in his presence is how one receives the Ruach HaKadosh. The word Ruach, mean, Ruach means wind or breath. So we see when a person is truly in the presence of Yahuwah, they are in position for him to breathe into yes. them. <laughs> see, see, you when people when people ask me, how do I get the Ruach? How do I get the Ruach? When, when do I know I got the Ruach? Get in his face yes. because that's where his mouth is. Yes. You want him to breathe on you? Notice after the resurrection of the Mashiach, uh, he said he said he breathed on them. Yes. Receive you the Ruach HaKadosh. You got, but in order for you to receive it, you got to be close to him. Because if you fall away, you can't get it. If you fall away, you 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 ain't prayed all week long. Look, don't expect nothing from the Most High, because you've been turning. Ooh, you've been turning to other things, and those have been your gods. But then you want to ask him for something. Strengthen me. Give me, give me life. Give me, give me this. Give me money. Give me this. Give me this. like he's a big Santa Claus in the sky. This ain't, woo, this ain't Christianity. You gotta cry out before him and get in his face, so he can breathe on you. You want newness of life? Look, 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 look. And 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 Yah formed the man out of the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. You got to be close to him for him to put his lips on you and breathe into you. You got to be close to him to feel the breath on your skin. You got to be close to, to know what his will is for you because if you fall away, you're not going to get it. You, you're not going to get it. You're not going to hear him. You hear everything else, but you won't hear him. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 37 and 9. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, O mortal. Say to the breath, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, come, O breath, from the four winds. Four winds. Like the Dalit, fourth tribe, Judah, praise Breathe, all right. Breathe into these slain that they may live again. What is dead in your life? What is dead in your life that you need him to breathe on? You need him to breathe on, on your body? Do you need him to breathe on your finances? Do you need him to breathe on your family members? Do you need him to breathe on your children? Do you need him to breathe on your husband or your wife? Do you need him to breathe, watch this, on you? Look, look, don't, don't look at everybody else and say, they need to get it together, they need to. No, you need him to breathe on you. How you, look, Mashiach put it like this. How can you say to your neighbor, uh, uh, take the speck out of your eye and you got a whole beam in your face? I need him to breathe on me. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The tabernacle. The tabernacle. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Pay close attention, hallelujah, because we've we've transitioned from the kiddie pool to the deep waters. I hope you are ready. Got your seatbelt fastened, your tray tables in the upper right, upper right positions. All right, the word sanctuary is mikdash. Mikdash. Sounds very familiar, all right, which comes from the same root as holy, kadash or kodesh. A sanctuary is a set-apart place that is dedicated for the worship and service of Elohim. Pay close attention to that. You know, what we saw, what we read in the Torah is a, they gathered all these things. You'll read that in the Torah portion to Roma, right? They gathered all these and the people had a mind to want to do it, to want to worship. Look, look, Israelites give. If I, they don't have to be told to give. They it's in them to support each other to help those in need. That's what Israel does, right? Hallelujah, let's get deep into it. 
the tabernacle. The tabernacle was divided into three main sections, the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of holies. The holy of holies is where the ark of the covenant rested, which was also the place set apart for the presence of Yahuwah. Only once a year was the high priest or the Kohen Gadol allowed inside on Yom Kippur, y'all know that, to offer blood for the sins of himself as well as for the people. There was a veil that divided the Holy of Holies from the other parts. In order to understand Yah's presence, we need to understand why the tabernacle was built in the first place. Again, Exodus 25 and 8, they are to make me a sanctuary so that I may live among them. Mm. All right. So as you can see, this is just, just a picture of what we're talking about. Tabernacle the priests, the Levites doing their work on the outside and making sacrifice. Just a side note, uh, anybody who studies the word of Yah, you really have to understand when you read the Torah and you look at the origin of the, of the kings and the priests. You all should know uh, Ju uh, the kings came from the tribe of what? Judah, right? The priesthood came from the tribe of what? Levi, right? Guess what? Both uh, those uh, sons came from the same woman. The same womb, Leah, the one who said, will my husband love me? She started on her first, first son, she named Reuben. Will he love, maybe he'll love me now, because she wasn't the first choice. You'll read in the Torah where when Levi was born, she, she got excited, she got excited, and she did not even name the boy. It was the Most High who named him, and he named him Levi. And then she said, with the fourth son, now I'm going to praise the Most High, and I'm going to name him Judah or Yehuda. So the kings and the priests came from the same place. That's why Yahusha, his mother, went unto her cousin Elizabeth, and she was from Levi, but she was from Yehuda. All right, y'all, that, that was answer. That was free. Hey, all right, all right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Don't, don't, don't sidetrack me. Hallelujah. All right. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. The Hebrew word translated as among can actually mean inside of. It has always been in the design and plan of Yahuwah for him to dwell inside of his people. This is why the tabernacle or the sanctuary was positioned inside of the camp. He always wanted to be inside of us. If you understand uh, the way ancient camps in Israel, basically all the camps, whether it was Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, they were all positioned in an order, north, east, south, and west. And guess what? On the inside was the tabernacle of the presence, right? Always until... Israel got out of pocket. When they, when they got out of pocket, he, he was like, look, I can't be around you. Why? Because you keep acting up and I got to leave because I will wipe you out. I will destroy you. Case in point, the golden calf incident. He said, look, Moses, get down, descend. You have to descend because he wants us up there with him in his face. But I need, I, you got to descend because the people that you led out of Misraim or Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have corrupted themselves. Let, the, let me alone, Moses, that I may wipe them out. And I'll make, look, that was a good deal if he was Moses. Because, look, he could have had his own tribes, his own people. But he served as an intercessor, a type of Mashiach for Israel. Because had he not been there, they would have been destroyed. Mm. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep guy, guy, look, guy get we just we just in the 60th. We haven't got to 12th yet. All right. Exodus 33, 7 through 11. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp. So this is after. Uh, the golden calf incident, afar off from the camp and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought Yahuwah went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moshe went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up 
stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moshe until he was gone into the tabernacle. Pay close attention. And it came to pass as Moshe entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended, met with him, and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and Yahuwah talked with Moshe. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose up and worshiped every man in his tent door. So, brothers, your spouse need to see you worship. Your spouse need to hear you pray. Look, look, yo, it's not enough for the sisters to pray. We appreciate the sisters' prayers, but the brothers actually have to be some, do some praying. Some crying out. Some, te some tears need to be shed. Look, at the tent door. What does that mean? Well, you already know the dialect is the opening of the tent door. But the bait, the house, only has one door, one entrance and exit. So you are holding down the fort, brothers, by your prayer. And when you don't pray, things can come in. So a man that don't pray is not the priest of his home. I don't look you 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 want her to call you Lord you want her to call you King you want her to call you a Melech and all that you ain't doing nothing if you ain't praying all right and that's not that's not look you ain't praying you ain't praying uh fixer fixer you know what you say in the church fixer Jesus fixer Lord fixer Yah fixer Yahuwah Yahoo shall put the blood of your blood on her so she can act right no you praying Father help me to be a good priest, to be a good husband, to be a good man, that I could be a leader of my home. Hallelujah. I don't want I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear about the, what the Motai told you. And you can't love your wife. You can't treat your wife right. I don't I, I don't want to hear what you done seen in vision. I want to see what you're doing with your hands. All right, that was, that was free, hallelujah. <laughs> and Yahuwah spake unto Moshe face to face as a man speaks to his friend. I want you to pay close attention to this. Face to face, mouth to mouth. What do you, when, when someone is sick, what happens? They, they have to do re resuscitation and they have to mouth to mouth. And breath is given and poured into the one that is lacking. And we already know the Most High ain't lacking nothing. So he's pouring into us and doing compressions on us. All right. As a man speaks to his friend and he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, depart, departed not out of the tabernacle. So you mean to tell me, Maury Rick, that Joshua was there the whole time? It doesn't say anything. It say, all it talks about is Moses. When you are a uh, hmm, a servant, you always followed your master wherever he went, wherever he went, drawing water for him, picking up after him. You was always. He didn't have to ask you to do it. You did it anyway. So watch this prophetically. Watch this. Yahusha was in the tabernacle too. Yes, yes, yes. See y'all look. Yeah, yeah. Put your, put your, put your, put your, put your, your religious church face, your religious assembly face away. Y'all who show was there in the tabernacle too. And I'm not adding to the text because Joshua, his Hebrew name is Yahusha. So Yahusha was in the tabernacle with Moshe. When Moshe left, Yahusha was still in there. Mm. What? With the blood. With the blood of the press. Y'all, look, y'all, look, y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't, y'all not ready for me this morning. Look, they say I'm ready to go. I'm ready to preach. <laughs> Hallelujah. Face to face. Face to face. All right. Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe face to face as a man speaks unto his friend. And he called again into the camp, but his servant Yahusha, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Uh, Exodus 33 and 11 from the Sefer. The word for face in this passage is the same word for presence, hanim. Thus, we see that when Moses spoke to Elohim, he was in his face. 
he was being breathed into, reflected. Moshe, Hashem, the opposite of Moshe, if you spell his name backwards, is Hashem or the name. He was face to face with him. What did he say when they first met? Uh, take your shoes from off your feet for the place where on you stand is holy ground. Look, the, the most high is so beautiful and wonderful. He don't want you to stand in, in your shoes. He wants you to take your shoes off and get comfortable. Spend some time with it. Ain't that the first thing you do when you get home? Take your shoes off. Why? Because you home. You got you comfortable in your house. He wants to be comfortable in his house. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, hey, sisters, you want, don't make me go. Don't, they don't want me to go there too soon now. All right. Yahusha was there the entire time. This tells us students have to be in the presence of Yah just as much as teachers. Look, I can be in the presence of the Most High every day, seven, seven days straight, 24-7. But if you are not, you are going to miss it. You're going to miss it. You're going to think that, oh, well, well Maury Rick is awesome. Great Awakening Indy is awesome. I go to Teshuva class. He, he teaches something new every week. Hallelujah. But if you don't do anything, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. Exodus 33, 18 through 20, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of Yahuwah before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy unto whom I will show mercy. And he said, thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. This is hard. This, this passage has 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 been a stumbling block to theologians, to seminary students, to any practitioners uh, of the word. So you're blessed right now because we're about to see what this actually is talking about. All right, let's get it. The presence causes me to decrease. The same chapter records you who was speaking with Moshe face to face. And then a few verses later, you says no man could behold his face and live. What exactly does that mean? Whenever we are in the presence of Yahuwah, our agenda ceases. It's not about us anymore. It's about him. Moshe had to de decrease so that Yah could increase. In his presence, no man can live. Why? Not just because of his glory and greatness, but also because his presence reveals our need for him. He is complete illumination and revelation. Thus, when we are in his presence, flesh has to submit. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. Our joy is full because our focus isn't on our issues, but on his sufficiency. You have to die in his presence. You are dead. Notice, notice. Adam, Adam had no life until Yah breathed in him. He was dead in his presence. He was without life. See, you can't move without him. You can't move without him. I know you thought you drove to get here. I know you think that you woke your own self up. I know that you thought, even when you was brushing your teeth and combing your hair and all this stuff, you thought you did it on your own strength. No, you, he actually allowed you to do that. He allowed, he, even now, he allows your heart to beat and function. He allows your brain to operate. So what are you doing when you don't praise him? Notice what the psalmist said. He said, let everything that has breath Praise Yahuwah. And you got the nerve to act like you can't do nothing? You got the nerve to think that you just uh, arrived here by your own bootstraps? No, you have to die in his presence. All right, let's go deeper. The desire of Yah. This is what he desires. This is why I stress studying behind the text. 
it, you can't just read it in English. You actually have to see what his heart is to find out what he's talking about. If not, you will make the grave uh, mistake of thinking you know everything when you don't know nothing. All right, the desire of Yah. Shaken, he or Jacob said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the abode of Elohim. And this is the gateway to heaven or the Shammai. Genesis 28 and 17. But will Elohim indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have built. First Kings 8 and 27. Hmm. So you mean to tell me that the Most High wanted to live among his people? But really, in reality, there's only one place on this planet that he can actually live. So I hope y'all, I hope you're ready for this. I, I really hope he only created one place where he can live. One. He created, he made. Nobody else could build him a house. The tabernacle was just a shadow. Uh, the, the temple that Solomon built was just a shadow. There's only one place that he can dwell. That's in you. Notice what the Mashiach said. The, ki the kingdom of heaven does not come with observation. Then we'll say, lo here, the kingdom, lo here. But the kingdom of Yah, the kingdom of Elohim is within you. It's in you. You want me to prove it? Let's, let's go, let's go. This is an old depiction of Solomon. Notice his uh, complexion. That's for free. We just came out of Black History Month. No. Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. But can Elohim actually live with human beings on the earth? Why heaven itself, even the heaven of heavens, cannot contain you? So much less this house that I built. Second Chronicles 6, 618. The presence of the Ruach. It has always been the desire of Yahuwah to dwell amongst his people. Within the narrative of the past Torah portion, we see that Yah wanted a dwelling place or house so he could live with Israel. When studied Hebraically, we see that not only did Yahuwah want to dwell among Israel, but he also wanted to be inside of Israel. This is very prophetic. Let me, let me, let me pause right there. You, you can read in uh, Ezekiel 36, 25 through 27, uh, the prophecy, prophecy, ding, 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 prophecy of the renewed or repaired covenant in Jeremiah 31, uh, verses 31 to 37, that it, he said, I, he's talking about taking away the stony heart yes. and giving them a heart of flesh where he can write his instructions on their hearts. So really, with the, the goal or the purpose of the Ruach HaKadosh isn't to run around and dance, even though those things are wonderful. Uh, uh, it's actually for you to walk in the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High Yah. Yes. Hallelujah. All right. This is very prophetic, for we see later that Yahuwah would manifest himself in flesh as Yahusha for the sake of redemption. And that later would he would fill his people with the Ruach HaKadosh, putting his Torah on their hearts. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim, not as a second person. It was. You can't separate a man from his word. They had an old phrase, y'all might have remembered it, y'all that grew up in the uh, golden age of hip hop, uh, my word is my bond. You know, LL Cool J, word is bond. Exactly, because my word is me. You can't, you can't separate me from my word. So we're not talking about a second person. See, people, the concept, how am I going here? Uh, I, can't, uh, 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 I can't separate them because what happens is if you think we're talking about separate persons, that means you can relate to one and not the other. Which means that you're not really dealing with one guy, you're actually dealing with three. There's absolutely no trinity. Hallelujah. All right. So in the beginning was the word. The word was with Elohim. The word was Elohim. And the word, because the word is Elohim, was made flesh and dwelt among us. Watch this. Let's keep going. Promise and fulfillment. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. 
Watch this. But tarry ye, not go to the tearing room. I'm not talking about going to the tearing room and saying hallelujah till you, till you start spitting and, 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 and jibber jabbering. I ain't talking about that. Tearing, wait. Wait in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high, right? Which means at that moment, they didn't have no power. You mean to tell me, Maury Rick, they was living and walking around with Mashiach for a year and a half, not three years, not three and a half years, a year and a half. And they didn't have the power in them? No, they did not. Which means this is a different experience that they had to have. Woo. And when the day of Shavuot or Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Yes. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. This sounds like uh, Ezekiel 37. Uh -huh. yes. They were dead. Yes. Yes. They were, look, dead man walking. They were moving around. They were moving around, uh, but they were dead. Why? Because they did not have the Ruach. They knew the word, but we're missing the Ruach. Hello? Hello? Am I, am I live? Hello? They were missing the Ruach. They knew the scripts because they came on the day of Pentecost, but they, they did not have the Ruach HaKadosh. They knew the scripts, did not have the Ruach. Mm, Got to have it. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. When there's a fire, it burns away things that are not essential, that are not uh, 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 consistent. The things that are fickle, it burns those things away. What did Yochanan the Immersion say? He's gonna be, he's gonna immerse you with the with the Ruach Hakodesh or with the old mother say the Holy Ghost and in fire and fire. Uh, and it sat upon each of them, so it wasn't just Peter speaking, it wasn't just James speaking. There was one hundred and twenty people in the upper room, not just the twelve, one hundred and twenty. All right. And they were all filled with the Ruach HaKadosh and began to speak with other tongues as the Ruach gave them utterance. Mm, let's, let's, let's get deeper. Was this a one-time event? And Kepha said unto them, make Teshuva. This is why when some people ask me, immerse me, Maury, Rick, I want to be immersed. I want to be immersed. My, my response, have you made Teshuva yet? Because if you don't make Teshuva, you're just getting wet. It's nothing. You going down? You going down? A, a devil getting up a wet devil. <laughs> Make teshuva and be immersed, every one of you, in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach, for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Ruach Hakodesh. Acts two thirty eight. Why? Why? For the promise is unto you. Now watch this. This was key for preaching to Israelites in Jerusalem on the day of Shavuot. Yes. Pay close attention. Because Shavuot is really the anniversary of the giving of the Torah in Exodus 20. For the promise is unto you, those that are there, to your children and to all that are far off. That's y'all. Uh, even as many as Yahuwah our Elohim shall call. So watch this. Those are the ones on the outside of in the outer court. Yes, yes, yes. The nations. That's why in Acts chapter 10, they had to get it too. Acts 10, 44 to 48. That's why I keep, can any man forbid water, Sister Marcia? Can any man forgive water that these should not be immersed as we have? Because we heard them speak just like us. All right. Uh, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were immersed. And the same day there were added unto them about three, not 300, not 30, 3,000 souls. What we have is going to turn this world upside down. That's why you need to get in his face. You want your children that, are, that, that they ain't got no act right in them to be delivered and set free and saved? You need to get in his face. Because how are you going to ask him for something and you ain't in his face? You you trying to send him an email or a letter? He wants you to he wants you to tell him face to face what you need. He wants he wants you to tell he wants you to tell him face to face. He wants you to talk his t 
tongue, talk his language. You need to interpret what you've been speaking. Woo. And it came to pass. Let me move this down so I can see it. Hallelujah. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. That Paul, not with this, is not one of his letters. <laughs> Gotta put that plug in. This ain't out of context. Let's get, let's get it. Let's get it. Uh, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said to them, have you received the Ruach HaKadet since you believe? This means that you can believe and not have it. Woo! You mean to tell me more, eh, Rick? I can know my, 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 I can trace my tribe to E1B1A. I'm Limba, I'm Ashanti, I'm Ewe, I'm Ebo. I'm all, I, 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 can I'm, 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 I can trace it back to West Africa. I know who my lineage is. I'm, I, the sisters don't, I don't wrap my hair in a head covering. I'm wearing my tassels and my, all, everything. I'm doing everything that the Torah says, but I can still not have the Ruach HaKadosh. Mm. How does that, how do you, how is it exhibited? You still can't. You still can't. You still got, you still got, you still got Egypt on you. You still talk like an Egyptian. You still cuss. You still lust. You still hate. You still, you still backbite. Woo. But no, 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 I, I'm good because I'm Israel. I'm going to be saved because Paul said you sound just like a, a, a Catholic. You just, change, you just change the names around. You don't say Jesus no more, you say Yahusha. You don't say Holy Ghost, you say Ruach. You don't, you don't say Holy, you say Kadash. You don't say here, you say Shema. You don't, you don't do Sunday, you do Shabbat. But you still got a lot of, it, you got a lot of Christian covenant with Israelite clothes. And I'm saying you gotta actually not just change your suits, you need to change. All right. Have you received the Ruach HaKadosh since you believe? And they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Ruach HaKadosh. And he said unto them, into what then were you immersed? And they said, under John's back immersion or uh, Yochanan's immersion. Then said Paul, John barely immersed with the immersion of Teshuvah. Mm -hmm. So that was just the beginning. Yes. See, when I talk about Teshuvah, I'm talking about just the beginning stages. That's that you just need that I'm talking about elementary stuff. You should already know this, but watch this. Uh, saying to the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Mashiach Yahusha. When they heard this, heard this, they were immersed in the name of Yahusha. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Ruach HaKadesh came on them, and they did what? Spake with tongues, Glossa Elia, and prophesied. Acts 19, 1 through 6. In conclusion, the bent can be made straight. <laughs> if you came in bent, I promise you that the Most High can straighten you up. My, my grandma, my grandma, when I was acting up, I know y'all think I was born a more, and and I, I was born uh, in Jerusalem at the temp, at the temple. I was born on uh, Shemini Azaret. Uh, and circumcised the eighth day and all that, but my grandmother used to say, "Boy, you better uh, you better act right. You better straighten up and fly right." When she said that, look, I I remember acting up, and my my mother, uh, uh, my late mother, all she had to, you know, what she would say to me, uh, uh, brother Fenderson, she'd say my government name. She said my government name, and I was like, I would I would be running around the store, knocking stuff, you know, just being silly, you know, deserving of a whipping. She say my government name, and I I would stop because I knew that if I kept going, it was it was game over. It was look look she would look. I, I know y'all came up in a time where they didn't whip they look, my my mother would grab whatever was in closer to her house shoe belt them old tracks you know the race tracks. Look, you better act right. <laughs> Regardless of what stage we may find ourselves, whether you're a beginner, an intermediate, or mature in our walk, we must always seek the face of Yahuwah. Yes. 
In seeking his face, we gain his presence. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. When we are in his presence, we must allow him to expose the brokenness within us so we can grow and become better. If we come into his presence with strongholds, we can be healed. We must allow his presence to operate within us so we can be whole. The promise wasn't just to our ancestors, but it was also to us, their descendants. Yahuwah restores sight to the blind. Yahuwah makes those that are bent stand straight. <laughs> Yahuwah loves the righteous, Psalm 146 and 8. So if you came in bent, you can be straight. You can, you can be straight. The Kaf, the letter Kaf, is a bent letter. It's a bent letter. But at the end of a word, guess what? The Kaf has to stand straight. Yah wants you standing straight. He don't want you to continue to be bent, broken, busted, disgusted. He don't want that. Why? Because you bear his name. He told Paul, I'm a, uh, he's a chosen vessel to, to bear my name before kings. So if you're going to bear his name before all these people, all these things, don't you think you should be upright? Can't, can't come before nobody talking any kind of way. If, look, watch this. If you are in a court of law and the judge comes in, guess what? The bailiff says, all rise. So if you can stand for earthly judge, why can't you stand for the king of kings, the master of masters, the author and finisher of your faith, the, the one who, 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 does, who allows you to breathe, live, move, and have your being? Hallelujah. Can we give the most high some praise? Hallelujah. 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 So, hallelujah, we give the most high all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, all the thanksgiving. He's awesome in everything that he does. His ways are past finding out. He's awesome. Hallelujah. We appreciate everyone that's tuned in. Uh, on YouTube. Uh, we are the Great Awakening Assembly Indy, and my name is Maury Rick Marlin. Thank you for tuning in with us. We hope something was said uh, to strengthen you in your walk with the Most High, that you would seek him, make teshuva, and walk before him in all things. Hallelujah.